Eastern Anatolia is an elemental terrain of grand vistas, hardy people, and extremes of climate. Much of its scenic beauty comes from its high plateaus and mountains. The region's average altitude is 1,500 to 2,000 meters. The steep slopes, severe winters, and poor soil make much of the land difficult for farming, although some of the valleys are surprisingly lush and yield good crops of summer wheat, barley, fruit, and nuts. Dairy cattle thrive in the humid northeast, and pastoral nomads tend herds of sheep and goats in the drier south. Summers are short and mild, winters long and frigid. Southeastern Anatolia is mostly dry, hot semi-desert with torrid summers and mild, pleasant, sunny winters. The Tigris and the Euphrates rise here and wend their way through the region, bringing fertility and bounty along their courses. Where there is water, farmers grow wheat, rice, vegetables, grapes and melons in abundance. Besides agriculture and the livestock raised by semi-nomads, the southeastern region holds Turkey's principal petroleum reserves. Turkey's eastern and southeastern regions are at the crossroads of history. Camel caravans, pilgrims and armies marched through on their way between Europe, Asia, the Middle East and Africa, leaving their mark on the region's cities and towns. The traditions, architecture and cuisines of the Neo-Hittite, Hurrian, Urartian, Persian, Hellenistic, Roman, Byzantine, Seljuk, and Ottoman civilizations have all made their mark here. Set on a plain in the shadow of the Palan de Can Mountains, Erzurum is the largest city in the east and its main center for transportation and commerce. Although mostly modern, Erzurum boasts a citadel dating from Byzantine times, many spectacular Seljuk Turkish mosques, medreses or theological schools, and monumental tombs, as well as several important Ottoman-era mosques and a lively bazaar. Northeast of Erzurum, at an even higher level, is Kars, dominated by a great Turkish fortress that was used for defense well into the 20th century. The city center has numerous 19th century buildings in the Russian style, as well as several older Ottoman mosques, bridges and baths, and some fine medieval Armenian churches. Due east of Erzurum rises snow-capped Mount Ararat, Arada, 5,165 meters, mentioned in the Bible as the place where Noah's Ark came to rest. The stark, wild beauty of this region brings visitors to the nearby town of Dovu Beyazid, used as a base for treks in the mountains. A few kilometers southeast, the fortress palace called the Isak Pasha Sarai rests on a rocky outcrop backed by mountains overlooking the town and the plain. The 18th century palace complex boasts 360 rooms, halls, barracks, a theological school, baths, a mosque, living quarters, and a prison. Southeast of Erzurum is Lake Van. This vast inland sea, the largest lake in Anatolia, is surrounded by volcanic mountains and has no outlet. You float easily in the mineral-rich water and can wash clothes without need for soap. On the eastern shore of the lake, the city of Van is truly ancient, even for Turkey. Known as Tushpa, it was the capital of the Urartian kingdom which flourished here in the 9th century BC. At the Rock of Van, west of the modern city center, are Urartian tombs and cuneiform inscriptions from those early times. Short excursions out of the city take you to Çavuştepe, site of the royal Urartian capital of Sarduri Hinili in the 700s BC and to dramatic medieval Hosap Castle, 1643, which dominates a strategic valley. On Akdamar Island, reachable by boat from Gevas, stands the beautiful 10th century Armenian Church of the Holy Cross, decorated with delightful high reliefs of biblical scenes. In southeastern Anatolia, Gaziantep is an ancient town that has become the region's modern commercial and financial center. 
The textile industry brings much of the wealth, but the city is known and loved throughout Turkey for something else. It's pistachio nuts. This is the place to try delicious baklava with pistachios. Gaziantep's archaeological museum has one of the world's best collections of Roman mosaics, many from the rich finds unearthed at ancient Zeugma. Threatened by the rising waters of a vast new lake, the mosaics were rescued and are now on view in the museum. One of the most astonishing monuments in all of Turkey is the 2,000-meter-high summit of Mount Nemrut. The entire mountaintop is actually a gigantic burial mound. On its east and west sides are temples with colossal stone statues portraying the gods and Antiochus I Epiphanes, the king who built the temples 2,000 years ago and who may be buried beneath the burial mound. South of Nemrut is Shanla Urfa, known in Crusader times as Edessa. Throughout its long history, conquering armies have kept Urfa, as it's called, in tumult. But there is little evidence of conflict today. Instead, Urfa is a peaceful center of pilgrimage for the faithful who come to visit the cave where, legend says, the patriarch Abraham was born. Speaking of Abraham, the Bible's book of Genesis says that he lived for a time in nearby Haran, a town of ancient-looking beehive-shaped houses made of mud brick. Wandering among its timeless scenes of village life, it's easy to imagine what life was like nearly 3,000 years ago. East of Shanla Urfa, across the flat, dry countryside, is Mardin, yet another ancient city with a biblical connection. It's the chief city in a region known for its ancient monasteries. Many of them were founded only a few centuries after Jesus preached and still use Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke in their worship services. Just outside Mardin, the Deirul Zaferan Monastery, once the seat of the Assyrian Orthodox Patriarchate, is a fine example. The entire southeastern region has been greatly affected by the Southeastern Anatolia Project, or GAP, the largest regional development project ever undertaken in Turkey. Its 22 dams have created new ponds and lakes. Its 19 hydroelectric power plants on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers provide much of Turkey's electricity, and its hundreds of kilometers of aqueducts and irrigation channels have made the desert bloom. A fitting symbol of this mammoth project is the Ataturk Dam on the Euphrates near Shanla Urfa, the biggest in Turkey and fifth largest in the world.